Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? Not long ago, I picked up a new camera, a Sony RX10. I have various reasons for choosing it, but this video isn't going to be a review. There are plenty of those on YouTube already. What none of them cover though, are some of the things you'd only discover about the RX10 after buying one. So this time we're going to look at some things about the RX10 that you need to know if you're considering it that those other reviews don't tell you. Of course I bought the camera primarily to use for content creation, so a lot of the points I'll raise here are centered around its video functionality. First is that you'll find it challenging if you're a one-man band like me. The rear screen only tilts, so you can't look at your framing while in front of the camera. I figured this wouldn't be a big deal since the camera has built-in Wi-Fi. I could just use the Play Memories mobile smartphone app to check framing and control the camera. No dice though, unlike many of Sony's other cameras, the RX10 is incredibly limited in its Wi-Fi functionality. You can get a live view, but the only controls are for the zoom and to take a picture. That's right, take a picture. There is no Wi-Fi control of video mode. And with the still photo option so limited, I'm wondering why Sony even bothered. Another nitpick is that the camera has two different exposure meters. The EVF shows a nice bar chart at the bottom, like many other cameras. But the rear screen only displays the exposure value with numbers. Sure, both of them really convey the same information, but it's a lot faster and more intuitive to judge your exposure based on how close to center the little arrow is. And speaking of exposure, the camera does tend to overexpose if you blindly trust that meter. That said, the inclusion of zebras is a huge help. I find myself setting up exposure based on those instead of the meter, and have been getting excellent results since. Something that has a bit of a divided audience is the fact that the RX10 charges through USB. It doesn't include a dedicated battery charger in the box, just a USB cable and AC adapter. I happen to like this feature because it means I don't need to pack any extra stuff. When I travel, I'm bringing a USB charger anyway, so why not just use that for my camera as well? The bummer is that you can't power the camera through USB. If you turn it on with the cable attached, it always thinks it's connected to a computer and goes into data transfer mode. If you want external power for the camera, you have to buy a special cable that works like a dummy battery. Why would you want external power for the camera anyway? Well, what if you want to shoot a long time lapse? Well, too bad, you can't. The RX10 doesn't have an intervalometer. It makes no sense to me why it doesn't. It's a basic feature that's really just based on software. But the biggest head scratcher when it comes to software features or lack thereof is autofocus in video. Despite the fact that there's a knob on the front that offers an option for single shot autofocus, it doesn't work in video mode. If you want AF, it's continuous only. And even more confounding is that the AF is locked to the largest area, so it's tough to get the camera to focus on small foreground objects. It always wants to go straight to the background. Other cameras can do single shot AF or can change the focus area in continuous mode, so why can't the RX10? The workaround that several folks have found is to reprogram one of the buttons to toggle between auto and manual focus. Get the camera to autofocus on what you want, then switch it to manual so it doesn't change. And that illustrates one of the many positive aspects of this camera that often gets missed. Damn near every button on the thing can be customized, including the options in the quick menu. I can spin the dial to change ISO, press right to change steady shot mode, press left to adjust audio levels, you get the idea. In the fall of 2014, Sony came out with a firmware update that added one major feature to the camera, and that is the XAVC-S video codec. This codec produces simply beautiful results. 
50 megabit per second data rates absolutely blow AVC HD out of the water. And along with this, the memory cards are formatted with the XFAT file system, which allows for long video clips to be seamless. You're still limited to 30 minutes per clip, but the camera doesn't break them into separate four gigabyte files as shooting progresses. It's simply one file per clip. Now, I can hear you yelling at your screen, dude, buy a Panasonic FC1000. It shoots 4K and costs 100 bucks less. I seriously considered it but that camera isn't perfect either. Yes, it has the tilty flippy screen and a decent Wi-Fi app, but shooting in 4K crops in on the image. And you're going to want to shoot in 4K all the time because the 1080p mode is stuck using low bitrate AVC HD. And if you're shooting 4K, you have to have a workflow to support it. Not all editing software can handle those files yet. It has a longer zoom than the RX10, but it's variable from f2.8 to f4. There's also no built-in ND filter, which I've actually found invaluable in the RX10. And while it seems like a minor thing, the tripod thread on the FC1000 isn't centered with the lens. It's off to the side, and if you have a quick release plate on there, it blocks the door for the battery and memory card. My camera is on a tripod 90% of the time, so the prospect of removing the quick release plate just to change the battery is really unappealing. I know I've given the RX10 a lot of criticism in this video, but in no way do I think it's a bad camera. In fact, it's the opposite. The RX10 is fantastic and well worth its asking price, especially after the firmware update to add XAVCS. The quality it offers is simply awesome for the money. Despite all of my gripes and nitpicks, I just can't help but love this camera. In some ways, its limitations help me become a better photographer by pushing me out of auto modes and into doing more things manually. I get to participate more in the creation of my content rather than just pressing record. I didn't make this video to complain about or trash talk the RX10. I made it so that if you're considering one, you simply know what's in store for you. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. That helps me out quite a bit. And as always, thanks for watching.